Good evening, Azeroth, and welcome to episode 144 of the World of Goldcraft. As usual, I'm your host, the Lazy Goldmaker of the LazyGoldmaker.com. For once, I'm not coming to you live, since uh, I'm on vacation. I'm not on vacation right now, as you can see, I'm at my regular uh, recording space, but I don't have time to stream. Uh, cause we'll be, uh, there's way too much stuff to do before we're leaving again tomorrow morning. But I am recording this one. There won't be an episode next week either. Or next week there won't be an episode for the first time this uh, this summer. Because I'll be too far away. I just won't be able to record. So, hopefully this is going to be a good one instead. Of course, the podcast is made available by my patrons. That, amongst other things, can get access to all of the stuff I post on the lazygoldmaker.com uh, one week ahead of time. So, get those guides while they're fresh and jump into markets ahead of your competition. If you're interested, head on over to patreon.com slash the lazy gold maker. So, uh, today I thought I'd talk about how you can take advantage of hot markets, which is obviously a very hot topic right now. Uh, because, uh, as any of you who's playing retail will know, the rank 5 and 6 legendaries are, and even the rank 4s, they're flying off the shelves. We're just after a major patch. Uh, and today people can craft their rank 6 legendaries at the uh, rune carver on EU. They could start doing that yesterday on NA. Um, so things are just absolutely blasting. So what do you do to take advantage of that? And what can you do ahead of time to identify those types of markets? Are they coming? Can you make preparations? Because if you make preparations and you write, you can definitely have a, <laughs> have a lot of gold to make. Now, most of these super hot markets are almost always related to power increases. Whether it's gear or new consumables or whatever, there's that's the thing that really gets the gold flowing, always. That's the thing people care about more than anything else in this game. Be powerful, have their character do big dam in raids, do big dam in M+, etc. Um, so what you want to identify ahead of time are new items, new recipes, new materials, new grinds that players will want to do. Um, and any materials, any items that players are going to use to increase their player power in an upcoming patch. Um, so obviously it's rank 5 and 6 legendaries right now and rank 4 to a lesser extent because tons of people are recrafting those due to the shards of domination. Um, in other patches in 9.2 we're probably going to see new sets of legendaries. I'm going to assume that maybe they continue in the optional reagent way. But we're for sure going to be able to make higher rank legendaries again, rank 7 and 8. Um, so that's going to be big in 9.2. Also in 9.2 I would not be surprised if we got a new set of consumables. That's something we got in 8.2 in BFA. And obviously new and improved consumables are going to sell really, really well early on. People are not going to have a stockpile of those, they're going to want them. Uh, so those are the types of items um, that I expect. And obviously there's going to be things that we don't expect. Like there might be uh, in a new zone, there might be certain items that are very, very useful for farming the zone. Generally speaking, how they've done it in the past couple of patches is that the new zone has some form of grind that you want to do if you're a high-end player or if you're someone who cares about performance because you can unlock sockets and conduit upgrades down the line if you're maxed out your reputation with the Archivist Codex and the, uh, the Death's Advanced stuff. Now, to identi actually identify these opportunities out of time, uh, you have to spend some time reading up on changes that are coming, like the major WoW websites, uh, WoWhead, uh, MMO Champion. Uh, you can follow top content creators, and I'm not talking about me uh, or just me. You need to follow the content creators who are focusing on, on high-end gameplay, on teaching players how to play the game, how to optimize their characters, and even playing on the PTR. Um, all of this will help you figure out what items players will be looking for in the new patch. What are the best sources of power and how can you fuel that? How can you farm to support that? How, what kind of items should be, you be looking to buy cheaply? Because they're not going to be useful week one, but in week three we unlock some new thing and this material is now super useful. Those kinds of things. The best sources for information is going to be top-end players and top-end theory crafters. So, um, personally, I follow a bunch of players from, from the top guilds, like Limit, Echo, uh, on Twitter, and I try to watch their Twitch streams every once in a while to figure out what kind of things they're doing. What are they planning to do in the new patch? What degenerate grinds are they going to be doing for power grinds? And what professional items are they going to be looking for? Um, and that's really, really useful because it gives you a great idea about 
what the best players are doing and that trickles down through the player base and then you find ways to support that so anything from what they need to craft items that they're going to craft or items that are going to help them farm that's what you want to look for so before shadowlands we had an example of this where definitely a lot of these people were expecting it to be using the engineering consumable from i believe legion uh, gun shoes because you could use those in the maw of course blizzard hotfixed those out but the price uh, had time to run up considerably and people were buying a lot of gun shoes before the patch um, if it had made it to live it would have been even crazier um, and if you stocked up ahead of time you would be absolutely rolling in it and there's levels to preparation as well as we'll get to later uh, another example of this was in 8.2 i think in in bfa where they added very strong bind on pickup crafted gear and in particular a lot of people wanted the rings from jewel crafting so many many raiders re-rolled to jewel crafting and they were going to craft the rings for themselves and they needed tons of the rare red and green gems and those gems exploded in price they were super expensive uh, because so many raiders and so many uh, people who wanted to optimize their characters were crafting these so if you knew that ahead of time by playing the ptr following the top end players then you took could take advantage of that now of course right now what's super hot is rank five and six legendaries and this was relatively predictable ahead of time um, because they're literal best in slot gear rank 5 legendaries have been craftable for a week at the rune carver and starting this week players can finish their rank 6 legendaries as well uh, so sale rates are <laughs> through the roof uh, and preparing accordingly would have been very profitable I've prepared in a small way not the big way but uh, preparation is not necessary I bought a small material <laughs> or small uh, 3 million gold material stockpile uh, but I'm valuing my crafts when I'm selling my items. I'm valuing them at the current material costs always. So what that means is that when I'm selling tons of legendaries right now today, uh, I am selling these at prices that would be profitable if I was just buying the materials straight up today on the auction house. I would be, still be making gold. Um, so the main thing I need to do is just buy more materials, keep buying materials, keep getting them in and keep crafting. And this is where capital is such a powerful tool, particularly in something as expensive as the legendaries. I can, if you can afford to restock continuously, if I can afford to just craft new rank five and six legendaries when they sell, or even craft up three, four of each and cancel scan and post those, then I'm going to be having a large advantage today against other players. I'll be able to spend less time just buying and crafting intermediate materials and spending more of my time doing cancel scans and getting the sales. Um, so there's someone who's really done their homework on this. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, Dirty Irby is a gold-making content creator. Uh, he's done an insane amount of preparation for 9.1. He has three legendary or three realms where I can craft legendaries. I think I can craft all legendaries on all three realms. Because uh, he realized that this market would likely be very profitable in 9.1. He personally made 150 million or uh, it was even a little bit more than that on base legendaries in 9.1 on a single realm so he's like the king of legendaries um so he did a lot of preparation he's generating what like uh 20 million uh plus uh gold in sales in a week or i think it was um obviously you don't have to go there even with my limited prep i was making i made 9 million gold last week i have up to about uh four and a half million since monday uh in new sales and so i'll probably be topping out at a huge amount of sales and i've not been buying tons of corthite crystals or anything because the main thing you need to recognize is that the market is hot and that you need to spend time on it when sales are going fast you simply need to keep up craft more items there's no substitute for that you need to find ways to uh, spend less time on items that are not super profitable or not as valuable as something that's very hot right now um so that's something that i've been doing because always when a market is super hot you know that it's not going to remain so forever uh, something being very profitable is going to attract more competition it's going to drag profits down sometimes at the beginning of expansions we can see markets drop very quickly if it's something that's like you buy it one time and you're done forever uh type of deal but most markets are not like that most markets are going to be relevant for new characters new alts that will always be coming down the pipeline but it means you need to change your approach. You need to go off all in as you can. So personally, I've cut down to reposting once a week on all of my other realms. I, I have bankers on 14 EU realms. I 
on mo on 13 of them, I post once a week now. Uh, and that's just because I have to do the Road to 100 million update videos. If I didn't, if I weren't doing those, then I probably wouldn't have even done it once a week. Um, so that's about 45 minutes that I usually did like every weekday. I can now spend that time crafting legendaries and reposting those on my main realm, which is generating tons more sales. Um, other things you can do uh, is you can stop crafting Crafters Mark III gear, even though it's very profitable and focus just on the Chain Isle gear or just on the legendaries. Because the more time you can dedicate to the highest profit, uh, highest gold per hour market you have available to you, the the more more gold you'll make, obviously. Um, so you need to take advantage of it while it's hot, and it's never going to be as hot as it is right now. Rank 6s can now be crafted, and I expect a lot of people will be skipping the rank 5s and going straight to rank 6s, and I've seen a ton of rank 4, 5, and 6 sales today so far. Just keep them going. Definitely slightly more rank 6s than 5s, but uh, they're all selling. You need to take advantage of that. When when you see something like this happen, or when you've expected something like this to happen and you're, you've been preparing, you need to take advantage. Just keep going. Keep blasting. Keep crafting. There's... That's it. Like... <laughs> That's the secret of gold making. That's the secret of uh, of gold making. Now, of course, preparation can give you a cost advantage and a very, very important competitive advantage. Something that's more important is just to save time. So what does that mean this time? It means that you had pre-farmed all of the renown you needed so you could get the Vestige of Origins recipe as soon as possible. It means that you've spent a lot of time before the patch crafting up enchanted materials. You don't have to spend hours crafting enchanted lightless silk to craft your legendaries this week. Uh, I'd not spent too much time doing that, so I've spent a lot of time on one of my crafters crafting those, but luckily I have two accounts. Um, so there's stuff like that that you can do to make sure that you can spend as much time as possible focusing on what's um, on the new parts that are the most value-add part of the process uh, when it's new and hot. And that's, um, and that's more important than doing like large-scale prep prep a la Dirty Urbi, that's for the few, there's very few people who can do that, um, and while the the results speak for themselves, I don't think you should necessarily, um, you should necessarily aspire to that unless that's the way you want to play the game. Um, just, just finding markets or predicting that markets could be profitable and just buying up materials out of time or crafting some enchanted light that silk because you know that that's not going to be useless. People are still going to want legendaries after the patch, obviously, that's still going to be the best in slot gear for, for those slots, and then you just want to craft those. Um, so as I said, just figure out what parts of your gold making routine are the least valuable, the least profitable. Uh, and cut those out for a while as you're focusing on the most something that's obviously very profitable right now, but unlikely to keep that profit very long term. Um, and obviously, that's most things when they're new, they have the most profit right at the beginning. Then it tapers off, but it's still going to be steady profits. I mean, I was still making gold with rank twos and threes, legendar legendaries five, six months after uh, 9.0 launched. So it's never over, or it's very rarely over until the next expansion rolls around. But uh, the more gold you can extract when it's hot, the better. So hopefully you're diving into Vestige of Origins and Rank 5s and 6s with me and making tons of gold. Or maybe you don't have that much gold and you're just focusing on Chain Dial gear, or maybe you don't even have enough gold for that and you're focusing on Crafter's Mark gear, which is also very hot right now. Um, either way, hopefully... You're having as much fun as me in 9.1 and making loads of gold. Uh, oh, and I also hope you enjoyed this episode because that's it. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Listen to the episode wherever you want. If you prefer Spotify, podcast platforms, YouTube, the works. It's available everywhere. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the lazy gold maker. With that, I wish you all, well, a nice hiatus because I'll be no episode next week. I'll be in the mountains enjoying the summer air and uh, we'll see you in two weeks goodbye guys <laughs>